Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. The sh shout green haired woman twirls around, taking in every inch of the palace. Izuku flutters around his mother, nervously laughing. Oh, Izuku, how did you manage this? Becoming a royal guard? She turns to her son. They haven't realized you and Shoto are watching, and you can't help but feel like you're intruding on the moment. The duo hugs, and Izuku smiles. If it weren't for her, th their highnesses, I wouldn't even be here. I don't know why they chose me, but I intend to live up to their expectations. Izuku's mother smiles and hugs him tighter. <laughs> now where are they? Can I meet them? You gesture to Shoto and you both walk in, as if you weren't listening. Oh, Miss Midoriya, you made it. You smiled, bowing. Oh dear, please drop the formalities. Just call me Inko. Both the Midorias dropped into a deep bow. Thank you, your highness, for everything you've done for my son. It means the world to me as a mother. Inko smiles, her eyes getting teary. Aw, mom, don't cry, Izuku says, getting teary-eyed himself and hugging his mother. Hm. Oh, sorry, Inko says, wiping away her tears from her eyes. May I ask, where are all the decorations? Mm, decorations? You and Shoto ask in unison. Yes, the decorations. Inko smiles. I'm going to butcher this name, but it's a Japanese form of Christmas. It's Kurisuma Suksuma? It's fast approaching. Uh, we don't usually celebrate. I'm just going to say Japanese Christmas, Shoto says. We decorate a little, but nothing more. Nor did my kingdom, you reply. We ate cake and sure, but it wasn't this grand. Oh, it's a very popular among the commoners, Inko says, helping some maid decorate the hall. This early? you ask. There's still at least 20 days left. Nonsense! It should be celebrated every week as far as I'm concerned. You and Shota laugh. Izuku's mother is a sweet woman and very kind and also passionate. You turn to Izuku. How's your guard training going? I hope the commoners is, oh, commander is treating you well. Uh, oh, it's great, Izuku smiles. I don't have a quirk, so things are harder than expected from the others. You're quirkless? I didn't know. Now you feel slightly bad for knighting him. The commander is a harsh man, and he can be discriminative. If Izuku is quirkless and a commoner... Ooh, he'll surely be treated poorly. The commander's not a nice guy. He's an exponential fighter and has a powerful quirk. But you've heard good things about him. Even though you've never met the guy, Shoto has spoken ill of him. Apparently, he trained the prince how to fight, as well as the royal guards. What was his name now? I know, I think. Hmm. You gestured to the only maid you knew by name, Maria and whispered to her, Please allow Miss Midoriya to decorate as she pleases, and when she's done, show her to her room in the Eastern Wing. Yes, your highness. Maria curtsies, smiling. The Eastern Wing is where all of the parents and spouses of the guards live, along with the more reframed maids, al although you've never been there. That's where Inko will sleep and spend her most of her de time. She meant be sad to be far away from Izuku, since they'll he'll stay with the other guards in the northern wing, but maybe she could decorate there too. Despite the king still being ill, or delusional rather, the mood in the palace doesn't hasn't been that bad, and the decorations only help. Maybe things are changing for the better. He took his door as closed, but you can clearly hear her speaking with Takashi. Their voices are muffled and ineligible, but the familiar tone of your guard's laugh pierces the door. You smile. I, you've been spending some time, oh, they've been spending time lately. And after Takashi asked about flowers, you're sure he's had a crush. You wonder if he got her any flowers. If so, what kind? The thought of an upbeat guard you've grown to love and quite and stern Hakati 
Hakata, makes you laugh. Opposites do attract, don't they? You see the doorknob start to turn and hide. Peeking out the door, Takashi comes out, a smile on his face, wider than you've ever seen. A blush dusts his cheeks. He turns the corner and you're going to ask Hikata for the juicy details, but you hear something that makes you stop. Sniffing. Sobs. Hitoka is crying. I knew the princess was listening. I know she was out there, outside my door, although I'm not sure why. <laughs> kind of creepy, right? But the state of the castle right now, I know, I don't blame her. His kingdom is falling apart and there's rumors of a traitor, much less the king's condition. The kingdom is cracking, slowly crumbling, breaking apart what seems. Soon, there will be nothing left. I put my hand in my head, oh, my, my he hands in my head. What? Okay, surely. Surely the princess has left by now, so it should be fine. It should be fine, right? Everything will be fine. I should stop lying to myself. I've always been good at lying. So good at tricking people. Perhaps I could have convinced myself I could make a better life here. All my lies come flooding back as my tears fall. Just Hikoto. I've been in that dungeon for days. It's my arm that's broken. Don't have one. Don't need one. And the worst of all of them, I don't need you. It was before I came to the palace. But right then, this crazy stuff began. It was a fight with my brother. My only brother. But I left in silence. Those last few words echoing through my head as I ran away from the only family I've ever known. Oh God, how do I wish I could take them back? Apologize, even though I know he never likes apologies. He was more of a forget things and go back to normal kind of guy. I'll never forget. I'll never forget you. Your crazy lavender hair and stoic gaze. I love you, Shinzo. And I do need you. I'll never forget. So could you please forgive me either? Okay?